So from the area that I grew up in all my life, this upcoming show should possibly describe everything. Because this is the area that, well, never mind. But let me just say that Prosper Park is an eccentric comedy from Fragile Wildflower Productions. And as we mentioned, they're here for the whole show. It follows the misadventures of a group of youth and millennials who are just living their best life in Prosper Park, Brooklyn, New York, just like me. It's time, and you know what? It's time to meet the cast. So I'm going to do it this way and just let them introduce themselves. But I, but let me also, but I will say, let me please welcome Shiv Masan and Cam. I play Cam in Park Park. I'm Justin Jarrell. <laughs> Patrick Brancato. <laughs> Brittany Hayward. And we all know this is Courtney Kurt. Says on again, obviously. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> She's here with us the whole show. I'm getting a hearing aid problem over here with that loud laughter. Y'all are good here, yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> good. Mm. Mm, so, well, actually, I should start. You mentioned it already. You play the role of Cam mm -hmm. here. And as I look through oh, the car, it's so boy. <laughs> so, oh, there we go. So you play the role of Cam, and you're like a new good-natured multilingual and getting back into the dating scene after having some bad experiences. Like, can you describe more about your character as the type of experiences Cam goes through, both in reality and in life in particular? Mm -hmm. So I saw Cam as sort of this boy next door, sort of with a twist. Um, he's a nice guy, likes to help people. He's traveled the world, he's seen a lot of different things. <laughs> Um, and now he's come back and he's sort of navigating through the dating world and he seems to have one hiccup that keeps coming up in all his dates. He might meet someone nice, but there's always that one hiccup, which is his profession, which is what I want everyone to see. Um, You're not trying yeah, to give me the hiccups, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Um... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so yeah, so he's navigating through the dating world and he finally thinks he may have found something he really likes, and he's hoping mm -hmm. that this profession that he does really enjoy doesn't come in the way this time. Mm -hmm. How would you describe dating and relationships in your view? Is it easy or is it hard to like get into the dating world here? I feel like in today's generation it's probably easier. There's so many different ways to do it. You've got apps and you're constantly meeting people at work, especially in our field as actors. Mm -hmm. In the creative field you're constantly meeting new people. So do you in believe a way, in it's easier. Do you believe in dating apps here? I ha I, I, I'd be lying if I said I haven't used them, but I prefer meeting people in person. <laughs> yeah, and Courtney's looking at me answer. like, what the heck? He's getting the tea. <laughs> I don't know what's coming. Look, we keep it real okay. here. That's how we keep we keep it G. <laughs> and right. we keep it exclusive because this is the spotlight, okay? <laughs> 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 well, ladies, I'm single, so if anyone wants to talk to you for a second. <laughs> I'm just an independent you, single person, <laughs> okay? So I won't say anything, you know. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I have to remember the names. I, if you're Justin. Just, Justin. Now Justin you, Jarrell. Justin Jarrell. You play, uh, tell us more about the character that you play and, like, the goal that he has to face or the obstacles he has to face here that you play? Hmm. Reggie is special. Reggie knows everything. He believes he knows everything. And I'm, since I'm Reggie, I know that I know everything, so mm -hmm. we're kind of in line for that. Um, but he's the male of a best friend triangle group, and we just like to hang out and explore our minds, but really just have a good time. And Prospect Park is really just about us being in Prospect Park and enjoying each other in the area that we live, in your area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not <laughs> stalking me, okay? Then well, you're good. <laughs> Prospect Park is also, as the rest of the country, specifically Brooklyn, is going through gentrification. Yes. And we start to dive into <laughs> what it means for us to be We invite a friend into our circle, and mm. our friend is potentially a part of whatever that means. 
and we're about to explore mm -hmm. how our relationship is with that character um, and what that means to where we live. Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Do you, do you think gentrification in Brooklyn is a good thing or a bad thing for not only Brooklyn but for most of New York City or all around the society? Gentrification itself is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, but what makes gentrification a horrible thing is that it means gentrification for one group of people while the other people, the other group of people are displaced. Mm -hmm. Specifically the group of people that made that area the reason why the gentrifiers are coming to that area. Mm -hmm. And then you lose the spirit of the place when you kick out the people who created the spirit. And when you whitewash an area like that, it, we're pretending that it's still cool but it's not. We're pretending that the culture is still there, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and that's happening across the country uh, rapidly. I'm from Charlotte. It's, Charlotte's getting destroyed with gentrification right now. Mm -hmm. And where do those people go who've been displaced? Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, in your character, <laughs> you play a homeless guy in the character who wears a MAGA hat. Right. Yes. Do, is it really good to wear? Do you find it fun to wear it, or, or don't tell me? I hope you're not <laughs> like a supporter of the guy in the White House because I could <laughs> run away and just hibernate for the rest of the year of 2020 with Barbara Walters. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am not a supporter of the good. Guy in the thank White you. House. Thank you for that. But so. You, but you, but when you're wearing a hat, you're also like portraying a homeless guy. Sure. So like, just tell us more of the struggles that your character goes through when he's homeless. I mean, yeah. I'm homeless and, when he and wears I support the, Trump. Uh, I mean, that's an experience itself. And when itself. he wears the MAGA hat. Sure. You know, well, homeless, have mm -hmm. no money, people pass by, right. you know, make judgments. Mm -hmm. You know, it is hard. Because mm -hmm. I also have a feeling of a mindset that I feel people should agree with. Mm -hmm. So living my daily life of shouting at people who I think shouldn't be in this country, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. you know? Is it really difficult to like shout at someone who is dealing with his struggles as a homeless guy? Because you know, we understand that homelessness is really something that needs to be worked on and that needs to be fixed. Sure. But is there something that you would do if you weren't a homeless guy, what would you do to like improve it, make sure that everyone has a home and they get the resources that they need here? Now as myself or as well, for the MAGA guy? As, as <clears throat> not only for yourself but for the entire society. Um. I think we could just provide more resources, mm -hmm. um, but I know there are resources out there that mm -hmm. you know homeless people can call upon for help. But um, I think we could create more affordable places or mm -hmm. just places for them to go. Even if we set up areas where they can just take a shower or get some food, you mm -hmm. know, because I know that's a big thing. And I also think, um, sorry to piggyback, no, I, I piggyback. was speaking to, um, I was at breakfast the other day and I met a journalist and she used to work for Roger Ailes, like the bombshell, um, for a long, a long time and she got scammed by Bernie Madoff. It was a great conversation, just a lot we were talking about, but what she thought that they should do about homelessness is like give work programs mm -hmm. where people can have a sense of worth mm -hmm. and they can be working for something and not just give them free things, which I thought was very interesting. And then my thoughts would be also to rehabilitate their mind, like mm -hmm. free counseling. And then an uh, interesting thing about his character is, is that his hat or did he find that hat? Because he's homeless and mm -hmm. his head was cold. I just remember, it was actually a true story. Um, I was walking through the subway and there, there was this homeless man sleeping. He had on a hat. And I just thought to myself, if I had change, would I give it? to this man wearing the hat, but you never know. I mean, he may not even believe in Trump, but if you're homeless and you need a hat, or you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, would I put on a jacket with Trump's face if I was homeless, God forbid, and mm -hmm. I was freezing? So it's just interesting, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And oh, you, I yeah. just want to blow up Courtney real quick. 
Just, I just want to like, you know. No, some... wait. This is a family show. I... <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to give, I want to give some, some props to one thing that I thought was genius just about mm -hmm. that scene. There is a homeless white man on the street in an area of Brooklyn that is pre assumedly predominantly black, or that used to be predominantly black, who has on a uh, Trump supporter hat, asking black people for money. Mm -hmm. and that's that in itself is. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You caught it? I mean, I'm a genius, and I was called a genius, and I was like, okay, all right. Uh, I, it, it's it's kind of like passed over, but if you saw it, if you get it, you go, wow, wow. Yeah, mm. yeah that's something I tell you. You that's have deep. a point there, because, you know, it's... Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and... <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> People always take credit. <laughs> I get, I'm giving you props. That's what I was doing. Well, I'm giving you props. Mm. Hey, we exist to her. <laughs> Where were we? No, I get it. Oh, you know, I, I, now I, I think we've heard from everyone, but we have not heard from Brittany. Brittany. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're making me want to dig through these cars to find your <laughs> really? what the character you. A co-producer of, of the project. All, projects. all three projects. Of all three projects. Yes. So. You're, now, as a role for you as co-producer, like, what got you into, like, co-producing <coughs> not only, mainly Prosper Park, but perhaps all three series, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, we're probably already getting ahead, ahead of the game, obviously, but mm -hmm. I'll just let you speak. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I met Courtney through my podcast. Oh, okay. Sorry. I met Courtney through my podcast called Seriously. Um, where we talk about web series, and um, we formed like a friendship um, from that time that she asked me to hop on Prospect Park. <laughs> <laughs> and I read the script and immediately fell in love with the characters and the premise of the stories. And then after we, um, I think we, we won at the Hip Hop Film Festival. Yeah, we, we won screenplay. the best, best screenplay, screenplay at Hip Hop Film Festival. This time CR Capers? <laughs> Yeah, so um, Prospect Park is amazing. So when she showed me the script for our other two projects, I was already invested and loved it. So it was no, no, uh, there was no way I could say no. Mm -hmm. Now, when you heard, mentioned you mentioned Express, right? I hope it wasn't the Hot Mess Express that you hopped on, was it? Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> listen. <laughs> don't listen. Don't mind what I say, because sometimes whatever comes out of my mouth don't make sense anyway. Right? <laughs> But going forward, I mean, where do you see this show going? Mm -hmm. And I know Courtney already has yeah. the answer, and I'm just going to end this right now. So our special <laughs> thing, no, mm -hmm. go ahead. Um, I, I see it being on TV. I think this is something really cool and quirky, and it's it, it does give you that 90s nostalgia, but mm -hmm. I think it is socially relevant and, and of the times and what I want to do with it. We're just going to explore a lot of different things with these three best friends, Reggie, Tessa, and Pam, mm -hmm. in the um, ever-changing Prospect Park area, mm -hmm. and they're all just so interesting. Three distinct personalities. Reggie, like Justin said, larger than life. He, he knows mm -hmm. everything or thinks he does <laughs> in the area, and he's the comic relief. A lot of people um, who have have seen it so far because it's still kind of under wraps into the premiere. Mm -hmm. Have loved his performance and Reggie's their favorite character. Then you have Tessa who's a cynic who goes out with Cam on a first date and then you have Pam who's like a boho yogi and eventual, uh, eventually we discover she has these powers and it's just an interesting story and I think it'll be picked up and people will really enjoy it and it's yeah. diverse. It mm -hmm. just covers so many, many things, many facets. Gentrification, diversity, mental health, um, what else? Politics, uh, everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it gives you a little bit of everything. I, I know that was verbose. Sorry. I'd like to make a prediction on this show. Please Prospect claim it. Park, because I'm imagining an episode, a very funny episode. With you, the, huh? with you in it. Yeah, not only with me in it, not but... Not only with you in it. But <laughs> where all the characters have gone wild on the Prospect Park carousel. Okay. Mm. That's all I could say. I don't know how it goes, but I'm just imagining... Homeless guy, too? That, well, yeah, the homeless guy... <laughs> He'll be asking The homeless guy may have done yeah. something wrong with the carousel where... where it kills all the leads? Not only, not only it <laughs> kills all the leads, but it Good. ends up like... Let's just say, not to get too weird, but the Jerry Springer show. Oh. 
Oh. Well, Molly, never mind. Okay. You got a copyright that idea, so nobody steals it. Hey, listen, I can't, <laughs> listen, I can't wait to see this show, and I can't wait to Thank not you. only be a part of this, but... Thank you. But listen, this is a show that you got to check out, and our, we have to give a special thanks to the entire cast and the crew of Prospect Park. Woo! Woo! We are going to, as always, keep you updated. Well, when this show will come on soon, 